Hi everybody and welcome to vodcast number 10 for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay and today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about carbohydrates and lipids, uh, which in our previous vodcast I introduced the four groups of macromolecules and so what I'm going to try to do is group them together uh, in a way that makes a little bit of sense uh, to help you understand uh, these things a little bit better. Well, uh, we're going to start off talking about carbohydrates with this uh, amber waves of grain picture here, which uh, is, of course, where all the carbohydrates that we uh, that we consume, uh, where where they all begin, uh, as some sort form of grain, whether we consume monosaccharides, which are sugars, or disaccharides like um, our table sugar or polysaccharides which are starches and so forth uh, they all start off this way um, and of course all of the when we think of carbohydrates usually these are the the types of foods that we think about breads pastas uh, also sweets which i don't think are in either of these pictures but um, also lots of fruits and vegetables contain lots of carbohydrates um, as well um, I thought that I would start this off by uh, coming to a, a, a food label uh, just to kind of familiarize us with, with some of the, or, or rather reacquaint us with some terminology that we're already familiar with here uh, relating to carbohydrates. And if you look, this is uh, from uh, some whole wheat bread. And this is fairly typical of, of uh, something that would be uh, what we would think of as a high-carb high food or a carbohydrate-rich food. Um, and I'm going to just kind of zoom in on that carbohydrate uh, section of the Nutrition Facts label. And there's really three things I think you should notice uh, from this. First of all, we have something called total carbohydrates, of which they're saying is 23 grams. Um, and you, you see the way this is written, uh, the, the total is given at the top and then the constituent parts or the, 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 the things that make up that total uh, are listed underneath there. So there's 23 grams of carbohydrate and they're saying of that 23 grams, three grams are what we call dietary fiber. So first thing you should understand or first piece of information you should get from that is well whatever dietary fiber is it is a carbohydrate okay uh, and then the, the second thing listed under there are sugars uh, which is uh, listed as, as four grams okay so again sugars are a carbohydrate uh, notice that sugars is plural which means that there are different types of sugars that we sometimes think of sugar as only being one type of thing um, but there are, in fact, many, many different types of sugars. And then the third thing I think you should notice is that no matter how hard you try, 4 and 3 do not add up to 23. Uh, so we see 3 grams of fiber, 4 grams of sugar. You add 4 and 3 together, and I think on most days that will add up to 7, not 23. So you should be wondering, well, what are the other 16 grams? Uh, if the total is 23, but we're listed as, with only 7, there must be 16 of something else. And what that something else is, um, is something that if you're a, in the food industry, you would like to refer to as complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates, of course, sounds like something complex and uh, kind of expensive and cool, but uh, we also call it uh, in biology starch. Um, and starch, of course, sounds like something that might be unhealthy, so they, you won't ever see that on a nutrition facts label, even though uh, it is, of course, a large part, as most of us know, of, uh, of, of bread and most carbohydrate-rich foods. Okay, so um, starches, sugars, and fibers are our main groups of carbohydrates. Um, so let's look at some information here. First of all, what are these things used for by cells? And what they're used for primarily um, is energy storage. Um, but then in plants, they're also used for structural strength. What we call dietary fiber is the, um, the cell wall of 
uh, plant cells, which is, of course, made of uh, something called cellulose, and that is, uh, that is a carbohydrate. So starch and cellulose are both polymers made from glucose monomers. Okay, so uh, if you remember from our previous vodcast, we talked about this idea of polymers and monomers, um, and glucose is the monomer that makes up both starch and uh, cellulose or fiber. Our monosaccharides, our simple sugars, uh, these are the monomers for all carb carbohydrates. Okay, so this saccharide, anytime you see this, this is a term uh, which essentially means sweet. Uh, it was from a, I don't remember, either a Latin or a Greek word, which means uh, sweet. Mono, of course, meaning one. So this is a single sweet or a single sugar, a simple sugar. Uh, we can also put monosaccharides in to, uh, in together to make up either starches, which are polysaccharides, um, or we can put them into disaccharides. Our, our common table sugar, sucrose, is a disaccharide. Glucose, of course, is a monosaccharide. We're going to be seeing uh, what glucose looks like in just a second. Um, fructose is another monosaccharide. Okay, so you may have heard of fructose. Uh, it is um, kind of been in the news lately as uh, you sometimes see high fructose corn syrup. Fructose is another monosaccharide, as is glucose. Um, fructose is, tastes very, very sweet to our taste buds. Glucose does not taste particularly sweet, uh, but it is a very important sugar. Okay, so what uh, I'm going to give you uh, a little more detail on um, glucose. And the only thing out of this that I'd like for you to uh, copy down is this, is the structure, what we call a structural formula. Uh, and you may need to pause uh, the vodcast to, to get all this. Um, but this is what we call a structural formula. Um, and this is the only, well, there's a couple others I'm going to have you do, but uh, I really just want you to get um, a flavor for what these things look like. Uh, the chemical formula that you are probably familiar with is this, C6H12O6, which means that there are six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. Uh, this is an extremely important, important um, uh, chemical formula that we're going to be using over and over and over again in biology. So uh, just save yourself some future trouble and just learn that C6H12O6 is glucose. Um, it is a monomer that forms a ring shape. This is what our glucose monomer looks like. Now this, uh, to you right now, this probably just looks like a bunch of lines and dashes and letters uh, and is not very meaningful. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is show you how to uh, interpret this diagram, okay? Um, the basic idea, if you think of this, this thing as a ring, uh, and this is also a three-dimensional object, okay? So here's our, our basic ring. And now imagine the front of this thing tilting out towards you like this, okay? So the bottom of the ring is going to tilt out towards you. So when you see the bottom of the ring, uh, it's not only the bottom, but it is also facing out of the page, facing out of the screen, facing towards you. Okay, so that when you see this um, this structure, the bottom, think of the bottom is also rotating out towards you. So here's our hexagon ring shape. Um, and one of the things about this that will right away be apparent is there's different ways to arrange molecules, other molecules around this ring. Uh, so for example, if this were some kind of a card table uh, and I put something here, well that's going to be a very different shape than if it's down here. No matter how I rotate this structure, these two things are different. Uh, I can't rotate this thing around any particular way so that this and this are the same. Um, they, they, are, they are just inherently different shapes, okay? So 
glucose being C6H12O6, again, if you look at it with this, uh, this sort of rotated ring, um, the six carbons are the, the gray uh, spheres, which are uh, arranged this way around the ring. Um, and then we also have six oxygens, and they're located on these places on the rings, and they're the, the red spheres. So one of the oxygens makes up part of the ring, uh, and then the other oxygens are uh, located this way. And then finally, we have 12 hydrogens, uh, and these little white spheres are represent the, the hydrogen atoms, uh, and they're located in these, these places around the ring. So now, if we are to take this and, and again kind of visualize that, that ring shape that we had earlier, um, we can come back to our earlier diagram, which looks like this. So the bottom, keeping in mind now that the bottom is facing towards you, this was the earlier uh, diagram that I had you copy down. And if you look at it this way now, uh, you, you can maybe begin to, to see what this thing represents, okay? So the shape of the molecule is important, and that is the real important thing that I want you to understand here. Uh, so this is, you, if you can imagine this facing towards you, coming out of the screen, this part is facing towards you. And then the top part is sort of going back behind the screen, okay? Uh, C6H12O6, um, another common sugar monomer, monosaccharide, is fructose. If you count the carbons and hydrogens and oxygens in here, you will see that this thing is also C6H12O6. They are just arranged in a slightly different, well, a very different configuration um, that uh, has a different shape. Uh, and so, consequently, um, we taste this as being very sweet. Uh, if you were to eat uh, some glucose, um, it is not particularly sweet because it doesn't interact with our taste buds in the same way that fructose does. The shape of the molecules, again, is important.